guys and welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video so today we are going cross country training aren't we max so we are heading to Tweedledown for a cross country lesson with lucinda green so we've had a few lessons with lucinda green that we've videoed so we are heading back there today just with the lovely max to Tweedledown to have a little tune up before our next event so He's looking raring to go, having a bit of a yawn there. Max, you've got to wake up a bit. So we're going to get him, give him a quick brush, get him loaded and head on our way. I think Max is looking raring to go, not. You're gonna have to wake up, buddy. Going cross country schooling. Come on, then. Good boy, right, let's go. You're blocking, you're no, blocking you're my view. Well. <laughs> what are you doing? Right, man, another way then. Should I get the right? What did you do? I don't know, know. I don't, we don't know. What did you do? Oh, it's too little princess. I asked you to get my stub box out today, which was very helpful, and then I remembered my um, air jacket was in the lorry. Oh no! <laughs> Well, you, keep, you keep, keep standing, standing in my camera view. <laughs> Okay guys, so we are tapped up now. I've got my stuff on. Izzy is here um, kindly filming. So I'm gonna go and get on, start having a warm up before we head over to meet Lucinda. So I'm just going to have a little trot and a canter. Lucinda always likes you to have had a trot and a canter before you come over so that you can kind of get cracking straight away. Um, he's feeling a little bit tired at the minute, but I'm sure he'll wake up and get a little bit excited. I'm gonna say to her, can we try and do some sort of funky lines and angles and stuff like that? Because those are the things we always have problems at um, and the jumping in the water. I think she's got those barrels out again, which if you saw my previous Lucinda video, uh, he took a disliking to the barrels. Whoa. But we have got some at home now, so he should, in theory, be a little bit better but obviously we don't jump them at home by the water so let's see shall we I've only done one event this year. That doesn't surprise me. No. <laughs> no, everything got cancelled and then I got a bit fed up so I went show jumping. 
briefly oh, with exactly. him. Exactly. Get, um, get some run. Yeah, exactly. But he went out last uh, this Sunday, just gone, just in the hundred because I didn't have done anything, and he came second. And then he's booked to go to Wellington 105, Excellent. and then hopefully more to Moral Novice. Super. Hot jumping, and keep them real small, and keep rising all the way to when you land because if you go to sit in the last stride very often you'll find they canter and the one thing you don't want to have happen in trot jumping is that they canter the last stride because effectively it's teaching them to rush as soon as they get close to a fence they move into canter and that's no good try to get them to come back to trot use your voice use your weight so that they come back to trot pretty quickly afterwards it's quite a fun exercise which i sometimes do a little show jump to trot the jump and land in trot that can be very, very difficult. But at home sometimes, just put up a little show jump and trot it and see if you can get them to actually take their very first stride and trot. It's just quite fun. It's just one more sort of way of sort of connecting yourself up to your horse's brain and body. Because the whole of this life is about communication on a horse and off a horse. So we're going to do that. And when you've done a little bit of trot jumping, you don't have to overdo it. I'm going to get you to do floppy canter. I'll explain that in a minute. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, go for it. So here's the deal, walk jumping, it is the most brilliant way to practice a coffin canter, which you'll think, what a brilliant walk, because you have to have the same feelings as you do when you're coming into a coffin. You want your coffin canter really small, but really powerful. The reason you want it small is because you want them to take extra strides before they get there, so they've got longer to see, oh, there's a ditch the other side and longer to see, but there is room to land. I'm not going to go straight into the ditch. So that canter has to be small enough for where there would normally be three strides, there's maybe five strides. But the canter has to be powerful, otherwise when they do arrive at the bottom of part A, they sort of roar over it if they haven't got power. So this walk jumping is an absolute rep of coffee canter. Do not worry that it won't go particularly well. Particularly don't worry that you will look ugly. You will. If you try to look perfect, I can promise you you'll get a run. So don't worry. Your job is to march, feel in that last second as they get just before they take off, that you rock your own body back and squeeze, kick whatever they need, the jump vertically into the air above you. Don't think of the jump going that way. And that will make you get your body back here and, and if they do it well it's jolly hard to sit to and if somebody looks perfect I know they're not doing it properly <laughs> so we'll do two we'll do a little one there which they might just step over but if you've got a march you should be all right and then remember you're coming up a little bit of a hill so make sure the march is there and teach them and one stride of trot is one stride too many any idiot can jump this and trot is what I tell you I'm on purpose the first time because that was so good. Good boy. Get the feeling that the walk is connected but business like. It's not going to hurry, it's not going to go into a series of little hot jog strides. Okay, <laughs> not quite much slipping way, but actually it's super. You've got to keep the contour. You've got a very soft bit in there, a little white bit. But once you're in the air, you're using the bit to hang on. Yeah. You're not allowing the reins to slip. Sit up and wait.
Let's try it one more time. Get yourself plenty of room to establish the walk. We'll go back up the hill, would you? So don't be in too much of a hurry. Don't overdo. This is quite a go a little more, so you might set it alight if you overdo the walking. Oh, this girl, and you slip the rain, and you can't hurry up. Yeah. You must have been good. Wherever you can, straight line and straight line halt if you happen to be stopping. Even though not many fences are on a straight line, if you keep them straight, you've then got them manipulated between your hand and leg. So then you can turn them in the air, turn them on landing. So I'm, I'm quite particular when I'm riding about the landing, the straightness, the halt. And then another day I might practice landing and turning left or landing and turning right. But the first thing I want is that straight line halt. Cantina, which is an interesting gate that I will talk to you about. But Di has immediately said it's her least favorite thing. So, so just let me clear up what it is. It's being in the galloping position, but safe. When you're galloping across country, you want to feel that if your horse stumbles, spooks, spins, bucks, you're not going to move. And if, when you're galloping along, you run these possible thoughts through your mind, and the answer comes up, I think I would fall off, then you're not in the right balance to gallop. Because you cannot tell when something's going to go wrong. You cannot anticipate when a horse trips, or when he decides to spin. And you don't want to fall off on the flat. A, it's the most appallingly painful situation, but B, you have to walk home, and you might have only done one fence. Somebody drove all the way down to the middle of France a couple of years ago, and got spooked off after the first fence, and had to drive all the way back. We really want to have that safe seat, that ready for trouble seat, even though our bottom isn't plugged in, our shoulders are a little bit forward. And our job in Floppy Canter is to hand over the responsibility for how they take off, where they take off, how they jump, 100% to the horse. So we are basically just a rag doll on top, but we do have a job because we do want to make sure they don't run out. And if they're likely to stop, we've also got to be ready and not let that happen. I don't want you being so intent on doing floppy canter and being a ragdoll that your horse learns you can run out, learns you can stop. That isn't going to help us at all. But once you've got the idea, you shouldn't find the running out and stopping problems. But what you will find is that they very often don't shorten themselves. And their last stride is almost straight into the fence. Only once because usually then they go, oh, I'm so used to you doing something and telling me to shorten, and you didn't, and I didn't, and then I had a really uncomfortable jump. So the next time they come in, they usually are wide awake. And this is what I want to develop in floppy canter. I want to develop their ability to look after themselves and make their own decisions. And I want you to feel the confidence, and it may take a few little rough moments to get it, the confidence of feeling the horse has got a brain and can make his own decisions. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>
very finite. And some horses' temperaments really lend themselves to this. Both of yours are goey and it's jolly difficult yeah. and well done actually. Really well done. And they rather love it. Super! Right, let, we'll, play, we'll play some lines. Time and time again, because something in our instinct, when we see a nice stride, gets us to think with our body forward. And my eye can't see it. I see a very good, ready for trouble, defensive seat jockey all the way in. The horse stops and they fall off. And I go, well, that's, that's how good my eye is because you can't jolly well see it sometimes, however practiced you are. But the horse has felt it and that's usually what makes them stop. So just be ready for a stride that simply isn't there. And if you're ready for the stride that simply isn't there, if it does come, you're in the perfect position to absorb it. And you've got to go at the earliest possible moment. You're trying to make sure that he desires every fence. And then you regulate that desire, dependent on all sorts of things, the type of fence, the type of terrain, the bending, the straight lines will bend, etc. So we're on the job, we're on the course, we're economy of line, so that we don't miles out there. We're practicing getting the time, but giving our horses a fair chance to engine balance and see where they've got to go. So you've got to change your mindset big time from yeah. floppy canter, okay? You're on the job, it's a fast time, created by an economic line. It's grey wall up the top. There it is. Well done. Log, log, turn in the air to this log. Then, like, curve round to this log. Yeah. Then the right hand dracaena. Yeah. Up the bank to the rail. Yeah. Then I'm doing the two, you're doing the second one. Come down, red legs to purple uh, to this one. Then I'm doing the two purple and you're doing the skinny. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Boy. Well, that was really, really good, actually. Really good. Very, very down he goes. We came through the windy line, which I was just saying, thank God. That yeah. This course isn't good. <laughs> um, you, you managed to just ruin that lovely flow, which you had to do. Yes. You had to do that. Yeah. Never, never made it, no. It. Yeah. Thank you. Good boy. Okay, we're going to do water, but do you want to do brushes, skinnies first? Yeah. Lovely. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I know when I ride, like, I've just had a few little blips out on the actual at an event, and but he can do it all and I can do it all. I've just got to, I don't know, I think so, and keep my focus and stuff like that because that was brilliant. Yeah, I think that's true. When, when nerves come in, it's yeah. What's the word? Discipline, really. Yes. Yeah. It's very easy to let that discipline that you've absolutely got every fence to just let it wobble away. Yeah, and that's it, I do. It's a, you know, it's not the big fence, it's often the combination and he'll just end up running past something. What I think you've got to be aware of with him is that he needs a real gear check. Yes. Right, a bit of a debrief. Yeah. So Ashley, Maximus and you are absolutely a partnership. It's lovely to watch and I haven't seen you for months. And you've, you've not done a lot of it no. the water and the show jumping has had to take place but it's done you good because two of you are so together he's a very brave horse i see and he takes his fences on and that could that's what we all need but it could cause you a problem and, and a glance off if when you've got a collection of fences quite close together if you don't realize how fast he's going yeah. so you've got to break the rhythm cut the pace Pop him into the show jumping counter that you've practiced when, when the events have yeah. rained off and show jump your way yes. over the difficult fences. Yeah. I, I see nothing going wrong. No. Very brave into water. Yeah, I was and, really and you too, that. I know yeah. that's your little Achilles heel. Everybody has an Achilles heel. And you just made yourself overcome it. Yeah. So thanks, Mum. I love that. Yeah. No, Super. Brilliant. Sweet Thank course. you so much. Yeah, yeah that great. was really good. Thank, Thank you. Great. Well done. Thank Cheers. You. I 
Beast boots all on. We're going to get him loaded. It's only 10 minutes away, so he can keep the ice boots on on the travel home. And then we can take them off when we get home. And you can have your dinner in a bit and get turned out for the evening. Okay guys, so we have just arrived home. Um, I'm gonna take Max's ice boots off in a minute, sort them out and they can have some dinner. Uh, I was really, really pleased with how Max was today. I thought it was a really, really good cross country lesson from Lucinda. We learned a lot and Max was just an absolute star. I asked her if we could do some sort of angles, some lines, tough lines, stuff like that, because when we go out eventing at Novice on the cross country, it's not the big fences that we have a problem with. It's often the combinations, if we have any to jump on an angle skinnies that he might run past um, and get a little bit confused. So so she really did put us to the test and he just responded he was such a good boy and actually you know they the jumps were bigger as well we did a couple of really big shoulder brushes uh that tough line with the logs having to turn and he was actually really really good i think lucinda's right you know with stuff like that actually almost having to show jump it really got him thinking and concentrating so that's definitely something for me to think about when i go out to an event um at combinations he then also jumped straight into the water i got some gopro footage of that and we didn't do it again because he just he popped in the water so well uh literally didn't hesitate didn't cause any problems i think with the water it's definitely me because i had the same issue well not the same issue with zeb but He's getting fed up but if there was anything he didn't like it would have been the water and as long as i just ride positively like it's another normal jump he just pops over it so yes really really pleased with max um hope you guys enjoyed this vlog i know you all normally like the training vlogs the lesson vlogs lucinda vlogs so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it let us know what you think um and thank you as always for all of your support we really appreciate it and we will see you for the next one